Thank you, Chairpersons. Yeah, it's correct to say that it is one of the most common fractures that we see in our OPD, fractures based on the fifth metatarsal. So let's have an opinion of the house raise of hands. This is a 45-year-old male with an inversion injury, a weekend warrior, like not a very athletic person, but he has found out doing some exercises. So that is the fracture that you have there. How many of us would treat this conservatively? Show of hands, please. Okay, and how many of us would treat it operatively? How about the rest? So nobody is raising hands for surgical treatment. So anyway, so many of us would treat it conservatively. And if you are treating all of you who raise their hands, how, how many of you would treat this patient in a plaster? And how many would treat with just a boot? And how many with just a crepe bandage? How many for one, number one plaster? All of us with a plaster? Some of us are not raising hands. Anybody for a boot? Pradeep with a boot? Uh, with a boot? Rajesh with a boot? Anybody with a crepe bandage? There are some people with crepe. No. Nobody. Would you allow, if you're treating on plaster, a lot of people are treating on plaster, would you allow him to walk on the plaster? Yes, 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 a lot of yes. Almost 30 percentage, yes. And others, would you, how many of you would not like this patient to walk on the plaster? Almost 30 percent again. So 30 percent would want him to walk, 30 percent would not want him to walk. Well, I will skip it because nobody raised a hand for surgery. Oh, you did. Who else did? So how would you fix it, sir? With one, two or three? For one? One. How many for two? Two. There's somebody for two. How many for three? Pardeep is for three. Rajesh is for three. Somebody else for three. Dr. Rajiv also. So then what is the conclusion here? <laughs> so orthopedic surgeons never agree on anything, isn't it? So, we, no, we never agree to disagree also, we always fight. <laughs> so, there is a controversy there. Now, this is the same patient, now it is three months post-injury, treated in a plaster, not uniting. This is 30 months post-injury, treated in a plaster, not uniting. So, was plaster the right treatment? Many of us raised our hands for plaster. Was plaster the right treatment for this fracture? Let's see. Now, remember that base of the fourth, fifth metatarsal, there are three zones that we should know. Zone 1, Zone 2, and Zone 3. Zone 1 are tuberosity avulsions, Zone 2 are metaphyseal, diaphyseal junctions, and Zone 3 are proximal diaphyses, and they are more like stress fractures. Now, this is an avulsion type of injury, Zone 1, where peroneus brevis pull is causing the fracture. And remember that this is the only true zones fractures. When the fracture line is entering into the articulation between the fourth and the fifth metatarsal, unless you see that in the x-ray, that is not a Jones fracture. So a true Jones fracture is a zone 2 injury and it behaves very differently. The x-ray we saw was a classical Jones, which behaves very differently than the zone 1 and the zone 3. So remember that when you call a Jones fracture and you see the fracture line, entering into the articulation between the basis of the fourth and the fifth, the injury is different. That's a true Jones fracture. While the zone three is the stress fracture. So zone one is very common, tuberosity avulsions, but zone two, that is a true Jones, is uncommon. Coming to the treatment, now we, we know whether it is a zone one, zone two, or a zone three. There are two articles which guide us, and this is one of the Chinese, they are very good in publications. Zone 1 treatment, most of the times, is a conservative treatment, which is the functional treatment, and these patients, which is an avulsion fracture only, you can allow them to weight bear as tolerated. There is a classification for zone 1 also, the tuberosity avulsions, which has no prognostic or therapeutic significance, so we'll skip that. There is another article for zone 1 by Julia Bowles. Now they recommend if the displacement is more than 3 millimeter, the, the avulsion types, or if the, if, the, at, if the articular surface, that means the fourth, the fifth metatarsal and the cuboid is involve, involving 30% and that area has a significant step, 
then it probably needs surgery. So two options, it's an undisplaced fracture or less displacement, you can treat them in plaster and weight bearing as tolerated. If it is displaced and there is a significant step in the joint, you may opt for an operative fracture fixation. That is about zone one. Now the true zones is where the problem is. Because these patients show almost 25 to 30, 20 to 25% and some people say almost 30% non-union rate. And the reason for that is that the area of the Jones fracture actually is a watershed zone. So if you have a, new, you have a neutrant artery coming from the distal to the proximal and there is a basal artery into the base and the fracture is in this area, the classical Jones cuts off the nutrient artery, so this area is relatively avascular. And that is the reason that the zone two, or the Jones fracture, has a very high risk of non-union. So how we should be treating these patients? Again, there has been a randomized controlled trial on this, and this is where it was suggested that 18 patients versus 18 patients, conservative versus surgical. 44% of the conservatively treated patients had problems, delayed unions, small unions, while 18 out of 19 who were operated had an excellent result of, with unions. So they recommended obviously screw fixation as, as the treatment of choice for zone two classical Jones fracture. How about zone three? We'll come back to zone two again. Zone three are stress fractures. They're considered as stress fractures of the proximal diaphysis and they too behave very differently. Again, those two articles, let's go back to them for treatment of zone two and zone three. What did the Chinese guy say? He said all zone two and two, three fractures in a non-athletic population, they concluded that can be treated conservatively, but the cast here, the difference from zone one is, has to be non-weight bearing. If these patients you are treating conservatively and you are making them walk, the chances of non-union is much higher than the reported 20 to 25%. And if the patient is athletic, then the chances of non-union are more and screw fixation with intramedullary screw fixation is the treatment of choice. What about the second article? What does this uh, Richard Buckley, the, the World Authority on Calcaneal and Fifth Metatarsal Base? Zone two and zone three, again the same thing. If the patient is non-athletic, then a non-weight bearing cast for six weeks, which may be extended up to two months, two and a half months, depending on the union rate. A non-weight bearing cast is important. But a highly active patient, I think, again, the recommendation is an operative treatment for zone two and zone three fractures. So that is the protocol. If it's a highly active athletic patient in a zone two and zone three needs an operative fixation, and otherwise you can try treat them conservatively, but if you treat them conservatively, put them a non-weight bearing cast for six to eight weeks. How about fixation? If you need to fix them, there are various options, but today the dictum is the intramedullary screw is the, is the treatment of choice. And then if you're doing the screw, we have to be aware of the fifth metatarsal anatomy. It's a curved bone. It's not a straight bone, and we cannot go beyond a certain point because the, because the screw is straight and the bone is curved and we should know where the curve is starting, so our screw length has to be shorter than that. And the average length where the curve starts is approximately reported to be 42 millimeters. 6.5, I believe, in our Indian population, the recommended in the Western literature, we don't, we are not able to put a 6.5 screw in most of our patients, so a, four, a five millimeter or 4.5 millimeter screw is the treatment of choice. Now, we do not enter the tip of the fifth metatarsal. If you're putting a screw over a guide wire, you have to start high and in. High and in means you have to start medially closer to the articulation with the cuboid, not at the tip of the fifth metatarsal. And then you have, we have to know the structures. The peroneus is there and there are branches of the sural nerve. We have to use if you're using a um, minimally invasive, that's a zone one displaced fracture. If you're using a minimally invasive technique with a guide wire, then we have to have your drill sleeve going all the way up to the insertion point to protect your tendons and, and the neurovascular structures. A guide wire and then cannulated drill bit and a 4.5 millimeter, uh, four millimeter cannulated cancellous screw over the guide wire. That is the standard protocol of treatment if we are doing a uh, 
a closed uh, percutaneous screw fixation for these fractures. Coming back to the same patient we saw and we had the discussion in the beginning, this is now 30 months post injury. And you see there are problems there also, something like there. So in this kind of patient, again, there is the final point is that you have to look at the whole picture. So once we had the clinical examination and the CT scan, the patient is in varus. Hind foot is in varus, but there was no lateral ligament instability. So if the hind foot is in varus and it's a cable varus foot, there is an overloading on the lateral side is a potential reason for stress fractures also, or if the patient has an inversion injury and develops an acute fracture, then a varus of the, of the cabovirus deformity will lead to a non-union. So these patients again should, should be operated. Uh, because this patient now had developed a second metatarsal base also fracture, which was non-united, and there was a callus on the CT on the third metatarsal. So this requires now reconstruction for the cabovirus foot along with fixation of the fractures. So we did a plantar flexion osteotomy of the first ray and screw fixation, Kelkin. Ah, so sorry. So dorsal closing <laughs> with osteotomy of the, of the first ray and a lateral slide calcaneal osteotomy and fixation, screw fixation of the fifth metatarsal. That is how it was treated. So summary, zone one, conservative treatment, of undisplaced with a weight bearing cast is all right. If there is a significant displacement, we can opt for, uh, screw, uh, for screw fixation. Zone two and zone three uh, has a high rate of uh, delayed union and non-union. Non and if the patient is non-athletic, then you can go for a non-weight bearing cast treatment. And if the patient is at athletic, active, or if it is an old fracture, then you have to go in for a surgical treatment. Thank you very much, sir.